Retouching portraits with various uh, skin tones is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Well, hello everyone, welcome, glad for you to uh, join us. Hello, Michael, good to see you. All right, so, and Russell, of course. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do is this. I, I wanna show you a philosophy or a concept on how to um, do a local, do a global edit of the entire image and then go back and locally adjust parts of it, all right? And in doing that, a perfect example will be various skin tones, all right? So for this image, the first thing we need to do is let's enhance the image overall. All right, so I'm using Accent AI, and look at that all automatically, that brought the exposure up for us. I'm gonna come down to the light tool, bump up the shadows just a little bit, and then of course, deal with the black tones and the white tones. All right, so that's my typical portrait um, setup. When I, when I first start, my, my go-to with portraits, a good starting point, all right? So we have that set. Now comes our lesson. If I click on skin, let's zoom in just a little bit, all right? I'll zoom out just a touch. Now we have three different skin tones. So let's start at 100%. Now, at 100%, the one on the right is over-processed, so is she. She looks good, but let's see what she looks like at around 80%. Okay, good. So this is the one I'm looking at right here. All right? And let me hide myself there. So at 80%, she looks good. So I'm going to put that in the back of my mind. These two here, they look good, but let's move it back a little bit. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to move it back just a little bit more. Yeah, see, now I'm starting to see she has a little freckles, which I like. Let's turn it back on. So I'm going to go a little bit higher, let's say around the 40-ish range. All right, so these two look good at about 40. She looked good around that 74 to 80%. So I'm going to use that as the as the um, the main one, 80%. Yep, that looks good. Now I'm going to click on Add Mask. From here, we already have it painted in. I want to erase, but the opacity, not at 100%. I'm going to bring that down to about 45%. Now I'm going to erase the effect on her skin. And then, look at that. Then erase the effect on her skin. There we go. And there we have it. Now, if after doing this, let me lock it into place. There we go. So if after doing this, I love, I love what the two girls on the side look like. The one in the middle, it's just a little too aggressive. I can come back in and either bring the 80 down, let's say to about 60-ish, 67. Good, so about 10%. So let's put that back to 80. Right about there. And then I'll come back in, erase again, but I only, I only want to erase, let's say 10%. So now I can do the same thing on her until I get the effect I'm looking for. Ooh, right about there. And keep in mind, every time you paint over it, you're, you're, you're adding to it. So I'm, I'm removing it each time, all right? So there we have it. Let me switch over to here. And the concept that I wanted to show you on that is that, <clears throat> excuse me, is if you have a subjects, you know, in a scene, and whatever tool you're using, 
you feel is too much on just one, use that the look the mask brush, mask in or mask out the effect on that particular subject. All right. So there we have it. Hello guys. Hey Klaus, glad that you're here. So what we're gonna do is let me put this in the chat. I should have Russ do this each time. Luminar.tips forward slash ask me anything. A W A. There it is. So we carry this over to Zoom if you want to join me over there to where you can ask further um, questions. Again, luminar.tips forward slash A ask me anything. A M A. All right? Guys, if you like what you're seeing, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to drop a comment below. All right? Guys, thanks so much for joining us. And I'll see you at the next coffee break.